So today we're going to make this adorable little baby sack. And I want to thank Lena on my channel for recommending this project. This project measures in at, let's see what we have here. This is about seven inches wide. So about 14 in circumference and then about 11 inches long. And it is extremely stretchy as you can see here. So it will be good for the larger babies. And this is a really fast project that works up really quick because of the type of yarn that I've used. Um, so the yarn I've used is Yarn Bee Tender Touch in Apricot. And um, this uh, yarn you can get at Hobby Lobby. And it says that you use a size 10, six millimeter knitting needle, but that's not what I used. I used size 11, eight millimeter knitting needle, and I actually used double pointed needles. Um, you guys are either going to love me or hate me for this project. <laughs> um, and you also need a yarn needle or tapestry needle. Um, so something that you can fit this whole chain through basically when you're, when we get to that point. So there, and then of course needles, I mean scissors, and then a crochet hook. I used L eight millimeter and I just found a big one in my stash. So as long as it like works with the yarn, then you're fine. You could probably just get a pack of these and um, it'll be good. So anyway, let's jump right into this project. I'm super excited about this uh, double pointed needles project today. Don't forget to subscribe if you want more videos. Let me know what you like and what you don't like in the comment section. And um, what else do you say? Oh, click the bell for notifications. All right, guys. So the first thing we're gonna do is cast on. And to do that, we're gonna need about three to four feet um, we're going to do the long tail cast on method for this. So the first thing we're going to do is cast on and we're going to use the long tail method. And to do that, you take your yarn, you take about three or four feet of yarn and you have your excess to the left. And then you take your working yarn to the right. And I'm going to cast on 36 stitches. I want your stack to be bigger than you might want to go up to 40, 42, 44. I like my newborn stuff to be really tight, so that's just the way I do it. So to do the long tail cast on, you take your yarn, just kind of let it hang, and then you take your two fingers here, hold at the bottom, so you make like a diamond shape. Then you take your needle or needles and stick it under the yarn closest to you. Then you take your needles under the yarn closest to you on your pointer finger and then through this whole thing here, just like that. So now you have two on there. That's the first time you cast on, you'll have two. So once again, you take your, you make your diamond shape, you take your needles, Take them under the yarn closest to you on your thumb, under the yarn closest to you on your pointer finger, and then through the entire thing. And that's how you cast on. I have another cast on method in another video and it just kind of goes through both method methods. So I'm gonna go ahead and cast on 36. You cast on as many as you want and meet me back here. So once we have finished casting on our stitches, then we will start knitting. Maybe, yes, there we go. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're gonna transfer our stitches. Since I did 36, I'm gonna do, I guess about 12 or 13, 12 on one stick. So I'm just gonna transfer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, okay. Take your next stick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10, 11, 12. And that should leave 12 on my other stitch. Let's check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Perfect. Okay, guys. So knitting with double pointed needles is just like um, knitting the way we've been knitting, except we have more needles. So basically, you're going to arrange your needles to where you have your working yarn going here. And this is what we're going to connect to. So we're going to push that one up, okay? We're going to take our needle just like we would knit, put it under this top part here just like we're going to knit, through the back there, take our working yarn, go around, pull it kind of tight, and then under, keep that connection, and through, just like knitting, okay? Once again, we go under, around, and then knock your stitch off. And then if we were going to knit continental, pull it that way, have your tension here, hold down here, under the front just like that, through the back, if I have to hold it this first set and through. Okay, once again, just like that. So you take your yarn from the front, around through the back. Oops, hold on, let me try again, I'll show you guys. Keep your tension, and then pull it through. It's harder, let me try one more time to show you guys. It's harder when I'm going slow with that method. So around, So you're just kind of catching it, rather. Just like that. And you make sure that there's a connection from one needle to the next, because if you don't connect, then it can fall off. See that? Let me show you from this side. I'm pulling it through. Just like that. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, let me try it. Let me try again. Let me pull it down just a little bit. Okay, now, see, okay. Well, I'm just doing really great today, guys. Let me just, <laughs> so anyway, if you knit English or Continental, whichever way you want to knit this, then you knit it, and we'll get to the next, um, the next stick ne needle I guess I should say okay so this one's done now your working yarn is on this one here see that and this one becomes the one we start with so I just kind of push this to the middle so it doesn't fall off keep them to the middle so they don't fall off and you just keep doing that. Now, I'm not using a knit, um, a stitch marker because I know where the beginning is because of my tail. And it doesn't really matter anyway because honestly, um, we're not doing anything really super specific. So you can basically just knit 10 inches. Um, you don't have to do any purl with this because if you purl, then the basically when we're knitting back and forth, so if we have our work here and we knit this way, and then we turn it over and we purl this way, we purl to make sure that the knit side stays knit. Since we're knitting in the round, we don't have to purl. So you are going to just continue knitting this entire thing. No purling, nothing, unless you wanted to add ribbing at the beginning. So if you wanted to do a one by one rib, if you're not new to my channel and you know what I'm talking about, you could do four rows of one by one ribbing, but it's not really necessary because we're going to have a drawstring at the top. So basically we're gonna start on this next one. Here, I'll show you. You just put your needle under, just like the other one. Pull it tight, knock the stitch off. So at the end of each, you're going to be done with that needle. And that's the new needle you start with because all of your stitches end up on this needle. So this will be your next working needle, I guess you would call it. 
So basically, just meet me back here after you knit 10 whole inches up, so 10 inches long, and um, I will show you what to do. Very simple project though, once you get used to this double pointed needles. But you see how the needles just kind of go all over the place? The only thing you have to really worry about is making sure that your needles don't slip off. I'm making, making sure your stitches don't slip off the needle. So see, we're done with that one. And now we're gonna go and start with this one. One thing you do have to be careful of though, you have to make sure you knit the same way every time because let's say that you get kind of confused and then you end up going like this way or this way or whatever. You have to make sure you're knitting in the same direction. So when you finish, like if you get interrupted, just set your work down the way you would be knitting it. So you have your tail going this way or your working yarn going this way and um, the stick you're not working with on the side. So that way you don't get confused and then mess up because it can be really cumbersome to have to start over this type of project, to me anyway, so. Now, once we start getting into it and it starts going down further, you see how your, your needles can kind of get crammed all together? It's not really a problem the way, as long as you pull tight, you're gonna be fine. Um, if you have to knit around a needle, so let's say this one was really close to it, if you had to knit around it, watch, the same thing is going to happen. It's not a problem because the, it goes around. So you see what I'm saying? It doesn't, it doesn't mess anything up with that needle. So. I do like knitting English style better for double point needles. And the reason because I feel like the yarn, um, I feel like I do a tighter knit and the yarn stays on better. So I don't risk the stitches falling off of the needle. But of course you're free to knit however you want to. And I was thinking, I bet you I have some like rubber um, little things and I can put them on the ends just to make sure I could not um, lose my stitches. So I'm still navigating my way around this. Okay, so we are now done with that one. And as you see, this is our, um, our tail here. So we know that this is like, this is row two because the tail is here. And you just wanna make sure to set that to the side. Now you see how it's kind of long through here? It's gonna be okay. Um, you wanna try and pull it tight, of course, but it, it's just, once you keep knitting, you'll see what I mean. It's going to pull it tighter as you go along. So just keep trying to do that first stitch where the two have joined together and keep it tight and you're gonna be fine because once you get three or four rows in, you'll see what I mean. And you can always use that for the back if there was a really big kind of bridge there. So I would not worry about it if I were you. Just keep pulling tight on the first stitch of each row that you go up and you should be fine. So, all right guys, so just meet me back here at row, row at 10 inches. So once your work is 10 inches long and we will, we will start our decrease. <clears throat> now, one other thing I want to mention, if the double point needles is just too much for you and you feel like, wow, this is just really hard right now, don't do it. Take your 36 or 40 stitches and just use your regular knitting needles and just go back and forth, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, like we've done stocking knit stitch and a lot of things. And then at the end, you can, instead of decreasing like we're gonna do, you can actually just turn it over and sew it up the back on the inside, just like if we were making pants or something like that. Instead of decreasing, you would just fold your work over and then you would sew up the seam in the back on the inside, of course, and then turn it inside out. And then that way you could have the same thing. You would just have to remember what was back and what was front. Okay guys, so now we have about 10 inches in length and we are going to start our decreases. 
So basically, the way we're going to decrease in the first row is we're going to knit one. And I'm going to do this um, continental, but you can do it English. It doesn't matter which way you do it. But So we're going to knit three. Then we're going to knit two together. So all you have to do is take two and knit them together. Okay. Okay. So you have one there. Wait a minute. Okay, so we're going to knit two together. Okay. Then we're going to knit three again. One, two, three. We're going to knit two together. And I'll show you the English way. Knit three, one, two, Three. This is the English way. Get this up here, and then we're going to knit two together. Okay. And then we're going to do three again. Knit two together. One. Two. Three. Knit two together. One, two, three, knit two together. I don't know how I did this so tight because I knit this whole thing cotton and all. I do not know how it's so tight. But anyway, knit the two together. Okay. And then we're going to go down this row. Not row, but this needle. One, two, three. Knit two together. One, two, three, knit two together, and then just knit the last two. Okay. Now we're going to just knit this whole row around, no decrease. So just knit this next row and then meet me back here. Okay guys, now we're going to continue with our decrease. We're going to knit one, knit two together, all the way around. Knit one, knit two together. Knit one, Knit two together. Knit 
knit one, knit two together. Knit one, knit two together, knit one. Knit two together. Knit one. Knit two. Knit one. Now on this one you see it, it ends with a knit one. So we're actually going to just knit each one individually. And then we'll go to our knit two on the next one. It's not a big deal. We're just decreasing. And this is the bottom of the sack. Knit two together here, knit one, knit two, oh, what did I do, hold on, gotta make sure I put it through the right, so what I did was I accidentally put it through the knot here, so we make sure and put them through the natural loops, knit two, knit one, Knit two, knit one, and knit the two. The next row, we're just going to knit all the stitches all the way around. So do that, and then meet me back here. All right, guys, now we are going to knit two together all the way down. So just take your two, and knit two together all the way around. You get to, say, the end of this one. You'll see there's one. Don't worry about it. Just knit the one. Not a big deal. Okay. We'll get to this one. Knit two. Knit two. It's going to be difficult to have it in there pretty darn tight. Don't know what I did. There we go. All right, and yeah, this one.
knit two and then knit the one or just knit three together. It doesn't really matter. We're just trying to decrease here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we have 11 stitches left. Let's go ahead and decrease one more time. Doing knit one, knit two together. Knit one. Knit two together. Knit one. Knit two together. Knit one. We have one left on that stick, so we just knit the one. Needle, sorry, <laughs> not stick. Okay. And we'll knit one and then knit two together. And then we are left with one. Okay. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, which is pretty darn good. That's what's left. So what we're going to do now. Okay. We're going to get our tapestry needle or yarn needle. Okay, so we are going to cut, I'd say about two feet, I guess. We're gonna put this on our tapestry or yarn needle or what, I don't even know what this is. It's a yarn needle, <laughs> okay. All right, so where are we at? Okay, so this is the end here. This is where the, the yarn stops. So we're just going to Take our stitches and put them onto our needle. Okay. Same on this one. One that is next. Okay. So it's kind of like if we were doing a toboggan or beanie type thing. Alrighty, so the bottom of our little pouch is basically done. We are now, we've got this pulled tight. We are just going to block this in here and go through the stitches we already have here. Ah, well, maybe. <laughs> This is, okay. And you could do this on the other side as well if you wanted to kind of hide this part. So actually, let's just go on in through to the other side. Stick it down in there, of course. And get this done. Right through the middle. Okay. 
I'm just going to tie us a little knot here. Okay guys, so basically um, my camera turned off as I was finishing this up and all I did was I tied a knot. Um, so let me show you what I did. So this is not attached, but let's say it was attached. I just went through one and then came through. Let's say it was. So I went through like this was attached here, came through and went around under to tie a knot okay and then let me take this back out right, so I tied a knot and then one other knot and then to weave your ends in so this is my end here so I tied my knot here and then I just weaved my ends in and the way you do that is you just push it through gently push it through and then just push it through and then you just cut so that way you have an end so that's all you have to do there. And look how adorable our little sack is. Okay, so what we're going to do now is make our um, chain ties at the top. So since we want this to have a drawstring, we need to make a drawstring and we're going to crochet a drawstring. I would say we need to get about... 10 feet, about 10 feet of string here. I'm five feet tall, so I just measure it against myself. I'm like five three, I'm a short little one here. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna go with 15 feet just to make sure. So, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to make a slip knot and let me show you how to do that. You just take your string, make a little loopy, take the loopy, put it over that way, and you just pull it through. And that's how you make your slip knot. And that's all you have to do. And you stick your crochet hook in what in the world? You stick your crochet hook inside of it. And then we're going to chain we're just going to chain until we feel like we can chain no more. No, <laughs> We just chain. I would like to have kind of long ends here for this. Um, so I'm just going to chain until I feel like I'm done. But um, you can also use ribbon. You don't have to make it out of a crochet um, thing. So you could use ribbon and I think rib like a thick ribbon would be really pretty kind of the same color. So, um, or maybe lighter, uh, if, oh my gosh, this is a really pretty pumpkin-y color. If it was, <laughs> you could use a brown up here for fall. Um, anyway, we're going into spring, so we're definitely not using brown. But, so let's go back to this. So to crochet, I totally didn't tell you guys how to do this. You just would hold your yarn here, the yarn that we started with. Take your yarn, take your crochet hook underneath and you just pull it through and that's all you have to do um, you don't have to weave the two together like I did up here you could just hold the string with one and then you can hide the string later cut it off whatever you want to do with it um, I just do that because I'm kind of lazy but um, if it's showing too much or if it's on your nerves you could just cut it off and then hide it in so
Okay, we're at the end of the line here. So we're gonna just take it, pull it through, and we are done with that. And I'm actually going to leave some string on here right now because the way I'm gonna put this through, see right there, I need that. So let's see, what do we want for a front and a back? I kind of, this is obviously where I started because it's a little bit bigger, see right there? So I think I want that to be the back. And I want this to be the front. So kind of in the middle where that would be the back, yeah. The big line there. Okay. Let's see. Yes, I like that as my front, I think. See, there's kind of a line here, so I think I'm going to put that to the side. Yes, that would be a nice front. So I have my um, so I have my yarn here on my needle, and I'm just gonna go underneath. Like so, you see right here is the top where we cast on. I'm just going to go in underneath it and just weave it through. So you see where it goes in between the stitches there, just like that. So under, under one, over one, like that. Under one, over one, under one, over one. Okay. Just make it uniform, however you make it, is really the big thing. We didn't need to do any yarn over to create any holes because we made this already. Somewhat large with our holes. Okay, so you see there, you can tighten it up just a little bit if you want to. Okay, and then on this little piece right here, now that we've already kind of gotten it through and onto our yarn needle, I'm just going to kind of cut this up a little bit. Okay. And then our last thing we need to do, this is so cute. Last thing we need to do is weave this in, but we're not gonna weave it in on this side. We're gonna weave it in on the other side. So we're just gonna push it through. This was where we started. This is our tail where we started. And now we're just going to push it through. Just kind of weave it in, hide it a bit, our tail. Okay. And now we are done. This is so cute. And pull it a little bit tighter. So you can imagine the little shoulders and the cute little body here. Yeah, it's that one's so cute.